Hey guys, this is Saptarshi here and welcome to our YouTube channel. So today we are going to talk about Mahala Nabi's distance. You already know that there are distance measures like Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance which are quite important for machine learning and deep learning. Okay, and uh, this lecture is also a tribute to the legendary professor Prashanta Chandra Mahal Nabish. And as an ex as an exception, we'll start by knowing the man a little bit. So he comes from a very learned uh, family and was a man of varied interest. Okay, uh, so he's called the father of modern statistics in India, and uh, actually he was a student of physics and started as a professor of physics also in presidency. However, along with his few friends, he started a non-profit society, okay, which, which was uh, focused on doing statistical activities, okay, which grew to be Indian Statistical Institute, one of the most premier institutes the country can post for, okay. One of the important contributions, as we already discussed, is Mahalanabe's distance. He also had significant contribution to large-scale sample size. So, uh, so Jalal Nehru was heavily dependent on him to come up with the first two five-year plans. Okay, and the second five-year plan is called as the Mahalanobis plan because of his contribution. He was awarded with Padma Bhushan, which is the second highest civilian award. And from 2007, his birth date is celebrated as National Statistics Day. Okay, so I was telling that you know uh, his interest was varied. So this Mahalanabi's distance actually is, he came up with when he was doing a study in anthropology. Okay. All right. Let's understand the intuition behind this. So let's say we are calculating distance between two students based on math score, stat scores and English score. Okay. And you can understand that maths and stat are highly correlated. Okay. So you can think of maths and stat belong to numerical aptitude. And English may be their linguistic capability. Okay, so uh, maths and stat as a result will be highly correlated. So let's look at a data example. And here we just don't take highly correlated; we get perfectly correlated. So whatever marks a student gets, so let's say, you know, I call the first student as S1, the second student as S2, and the third student as S3. Okay, so now let's say I want to calculate the distance between S1, S2, and S1, S3, right? So when I calculate distance, I just take the difference. So here the difference is 1. I take a square. Again, I take the difference. I take a square. So the square difference for S1, S2 is going to be 2. Similarly, for S1, S3, for maths, it is 0. For stat, it is 0. And for English, it is 1. So as a result, you will get a result like this. Okay, so S1, S2, the square distance is 2. And S1, S3, the square distance is 1, the Euclidean distance, okay? So, uh, at, at, at the first look, you may agree with this. But I can argue and say, see, these two are similar, okay? So, basically, instead of having two variables, okay, I should have only one variable for this. And if I have one variable, which is the average of these two, you will see that, you know, S1, S2 and S1, S3 are actually equidistant. Okay, so S2 and S3 are equidistant from S1. So that is the basic intuition or motivation behind Mahalanabi's distance. Okay, so we want to give uh, give this correlated group of variables same weightage. So maths and stat should get same weightage as English. So earlier what is happening is maybe you are giving 33% weightage to maths, 33% uh, weightage to stat. So as a result, it is getting a 66 or 67% weightage and English is getting 33%. So this is how this happens in Euclidean distance. If you use Mahalanabi's distance, then maths and stat will get a weightage of 50% and English will get a weightage of 50%. Okay. So you know if if you consider this as two vectors, the Euclidean distance is given as xi minus yi square. So if you have you know n variables or n features, okay, so there will be n terms like this. All right. So you can write it in a a vector notation so you can write like x minus y uh, transpose into x minus y where y which is the same as this okay so without any loss of generality i can introduce a third factor now okay which is a matrix and this matrix is an identity matrix so you already know that identity matrix is a square matrix where the diagonal elements are one 
So if I introduce a metric like this, you know, uh, this result, so this will be same as this, okay? So essentially we are saying that, you know, uh, uh, our distance measure has a form where I take a transpose of the difference, okay, a, met a square matrix and uh, the uh, difference between the vectors, okay? So instead of this identity matrix, we can also use the inverse of its covariance matrix. So you already know that covariance matrix is one of the you know important characteristics of multivariate statistics. Okay. So any data set you are looking at, multivariate multivariate um, data set, uh, covariance matrix is one of the things that describes the data set. Okay. So this I can be replaced by C. Okay. Now, basically, if the covariance is high. Uh, the distance will be adjusted. So, you know, if it is a high dis high covariance, then this distance will be reduced. And if it is not high, then uh, the distance will be more or less intact. So, ideal case will be, you know, uh, you have an identity matrix. Okay. So, if the covariance matrix is your identity matrix, then your Mahalanobis distance is your Euclidean distance. So, essentially, Euclidean distance is a special case of Mahalanobis distance. Okay. So, uh, when when I have an identity matrix, so basically what happens is, if you remember, right, so let's take a 3 by 3 matrix, okay. So, if it is an identity matrix, I have the entries as, you know, 1, 1 and 1 like this, okay, and all other entries are 0. So, that means, so these are your variance of the vectors, right. So, that means this ve these variables as unit variance or maybe they are normalized, okay, and these are 0, right. So these are zero. That means that these uh, two variables doesn't vary with each other. Okay. So basically, you know, uh, Mahalanobis uh, distance converts to Euclidean distance if the features are independent of each other. Or you can say that Euclidean distance actually assumes that uh, the features are independent of each other, and Mahalanobis distance actually removes this important assumption. Okay, all right. So now let's see how this can be used in classification and clustering. So you already know that there are a lot of distance-based classification and clustering algorithms like KNN, K-means, etc., where Mahalanobis distance can be used. Okay. So this algorithm, the algorithms can take a data matrix, okay, the feature matrix as an input, or a distance matrix as an input. Okay. So uh, here. Uh, what we are going to do is we are going to give the distance matrix as an input. How do I calculate this distance matrix? So I have given an example from your scikit. So we can use it like, you know, you can use SK uh, learn neighbors input distance metric. So in distance metric, there are several distance metrics. So one of them is also Mahalanobis distance. So you can use your input matrix and calculate the distance matrix over here. Okay. Now, how do you use in the algorithm? So I just give you the example of uh, k-neighbor classifiers. All other classifiers are also sim uh, similar. So where you are using this metric? So this metric is actually the distance metric. Okay. So here you can use Euclidean or Manhattan or something like that. And the original algorithm actually doesn't give you the option of Mahalanobis. So how to do that? So you have already got the distance metrics from here. So what you will do is you will see, say this matrix is pre-computed. So when you say this matrix is pre-computed, the algorithm doesn't consider the input data as a data or feature matrix, but use it as a distance matrix, so which, which is generally a squared matrix. Okay. So this is how you can use the Mahalanobis distance for classification and clustering. Another important uh, application is multivariate outlier. Okay. So here, let's uh, uh, take the most simple way of finding an outline, a non-parametric way, which is your box plot. Okay, so you find out the box, okay, so which are your central values, uh, median and Q3 and Q1, then uh, using the formula of 1.5 by QR, you find this two, and whatever is actually beyond this point, they are outlined. So, here these three points are outlined, here this is outlined, and uh, here this is outlined. So, you know, if you use only one feature, if you use only one feature, you know which are your outliers. But the problem happens when you transform this problem in the multivariate domain, okay? So, you have more than one variable. 
So let's take an example. So let's say we have two variables, height and width, and we plan to use uh, or find use using uh, find outliers using univariate box plot. Okay. So we decide if any person who is an outlier both for height and weight is an outlier. Okay, so that's what we decide because you know they individually say that this person is an outlier. So I am trying to take an intersection. Okay, and as a result, we mark a 6.5 feet person with with 130 kgs as an outlier. Okay, however, his weight is more because of his height because height and weight are highly correlated. So actually, he is not really an outlier if you consider the two variables together. Okay, so you know Mahanandam's distance actually can help you here. So it is calculated like this, as we already said. Okay, so earlier what we saw is we we saw uh, to find the distance between two vectors. Here we are trying to find the distance with the mean vector. So this is also called. So this technique is also called as finding the distance of a point from a distribution. Okay, so earlier was a vector to vector. So this is. a point from a distribution and the distribution is represented by the mean vector okay and uh, 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 similarly you are using this uh, variance covariance metric so when you are using sample variance uh, often you know uh, sigma is also replaced by s okay and 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 rest of the fo formula is similar okay so one question that can come to your mind is that here you are taking an inverse of the matrix okay so without going into uh, much complication okay so you can say that what happens if the matrix is not invertible so uh, what you can do is uh, you can actually calculate pseudo inverse and there are some typical cases where you may have you know more variables than number of observations Okay, so there also you cannot use the covariance metric. So for that, you will have to use some kind of feature selection or feature reduction techniques, uh, some of which we have already discussed. Okay, so now how to use this distance? So you know what we'll do is if I have a new point or or I just try to find this score, this particular score for all the observations. Okay, so now what I do is I actually set up a hypothesis testing. So uh, I take the square distance. So I take a square of this, okay, and uh, uh, which can be assumed to follow chi-square distribution, okay. And degree of freedom is the number of variables that you have, right? So if you have two variables, your degree of freedom will be two. So the null hypothesis is that data point is not an outlier, okay. And if the p-value is smaller than the critical value, which is which is given by your alpha, it will be taken as an outlier. So this way, you know, Mahalanobis distance can be used as a multivariate outlier uh, detection technique. Okay, and it can also be used as this one-class classification problem, which we have already discussed. So one-class classification problem is like, you know, uh, a, a classic example is fraud detection. So you already know that what are your normal transactions? Okay, so normal transactions may come from this area, right? However, you know, the abnormal transactions or the frauds doesn't have a Uh, doesn't have a clear pattern so some might be here some might be here some might be here okay so all of them are fraud you know they are not normal so this this that's why you don't call them as a binary classification problem and and similarly you know if you if you try to find out whether that point belongs to this uh, distribution or not you will get a p value again if the p value is smaller you know that this this doesn't belongs from this normal class and can belong to a a uh, fraud class okay so some additional reading so this is a very very uh, nice uh, tutorial on mahalanobis distance so one of the question that can come to your mind is that as we are dealing with variance covariance metric you know we have dealt with them in pca and lda uh, all of them right so you might be interested to learn a lot in detail their relationship with euclidean distance and uh, manner and mahalanobis distance so you know this tutorial is an excellent tutorial okay uh, will 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 show you the results step by step okay another um, another uh, uh, article that i want you to look at is this one uh, you, you know uh, this this actually uh, takes you to the history and tells you that how in a particular anthropological setting uh, mahalanobis was time trying to come up with okay so this is also it's a very very good read i recommend uh, you to read both of them okay so if you have found this uh, video useful 
do the usual stuff so you know like comment and subscribe and thank you so much for watching please give your comments and help us improve further